Hello friends, welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to look into product X function. I did a video um, maybe three, four weeks ago on a product X where we uh, took a revenue and then we use the what if parameter to calculate the compound revenue for the growth, um, for the future growth. This video is more or less the same, but here we don't have a what if parameter. Uh, actually, this question was posted in Power BI Community Forum. So what the user mentioned was a, there is an actual sales, let's say weekly, um, there's an actual sales. And then there is a forecast percentage, growth percentage. It can be growth or negative or positive, which will be calculated based on the compound uh, growth rate. Uh, and take the last actual value and then use that to apply the future uh, growth percentages, uh, whether it's a positive or negative. Again, the product X is going to be used in this particular solution. So um, again, product X is very rarely used uh, function, but I came across many times where I need to use this function. Anyhow, I will put the uh, link of the previous video uh, in the description of this video. Uh, but also let's look into Power BI file and look into the solution, how we're going to solve for this. So let's get to Power BI. Here what I have is a, this is the data user gave. So weekly, uh, it's a by week. So every week there is an actual sales or whatever you want to call it, production. So for um, uh, each week, this is the actuals. And then this is moving forward. Uh, this is what the growth is expected. So in in uh, 22nd May, the week of 22nd May, uh, I think this is the end of the week, uh, there's a 1.1% increase in May 29th, 1.5. And then actually in June, zero, uh, 5th of June, it's a minus two and then minus three and four and one. So it's going plus or minus. So what the user want is a compound. So first we calculate uh, a growth 52 uh, hundred dollars maybe we call it and then what is 1.1 percentage growth on that and then whatever number that comes out to be on May 22nd as the forecasted growth and then there is a 1.5 percent on that number and then whatever that number comes on to be it that is a negative two percent on on the May 29th number so um, to calculate this uh, again first first uh, the question was is to the last actual uh, production so first we need to find out what is our last actual production so that we can start calculating our uh, um, future growth on that uh, that number so in this case the last actual uh, number is 5200 to do so that we need to write of course a few my years so let's start writing my years i'm gonna i already have the my years written but i will uh, start writing these my years uh, in this video so that we can look into uh, what is happening in these my years. So the first my year we call it last actual production value. Maybe that's it's a production or sales, uh, whatever. And to do so, what we need to do is here we're going to take again. I'm introducing, uh, not introducing, but I'm I'm going to use another uh, function here that is last non blank value so what does that means is we're going to take a calendar and date of week and if you look at that the last known blank value the column name return the last known blank value of the expression that evaluated for this column so in calendar uh, we want to evaluate end date of week. This is what is being shown here. And then the next uh, parameter is expression. What we want to do is a sum actual. That is just a simple sum. And now th this would not work, but because what we want is 5200 is across all the uh, weeks because that is our number. We need 5200 on this row, on this row, and this row as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to say all uh, calendar. And so if we do this, so what I expect is when if I put this my year in here, I will get the 5200 everywhere. Here you go. So everywhere we see 5200. 
so that's the first thing now we know what the last uh, production value is now the next thing what we need to do is we need to calculate the forecast based on this particular value uh, and that is going to be compound for first 5200 multiply 1.1 percent and that is add to the 5200 and whatever that numbers come down to be then added 1.5 percent on top of that to do that i'm going to write a new measure let's uh, do that that will be called let's say a forecast forecast production so to do forecast production what we need to do is whatever our last actual production value is and then apply this compound um, uh, growth on, on that number let me actually show you in Excel before we uh, do it here uh, I have an Excel file on another computer let me grab another screen let me grab it so here you go and this is what we're trying to achieve with the product tax so if you look at uh, this file so this, this is the same percentage so uh, at the first is a forecast is 1.1 percent which is means uh, if we have a 5200 as our last value what we want is 1.1 percent growth of the um, uh, 5200 will be 5200 multiplied by uh, the growth which is so that will be the first um, our um, uh, forecast and the next percentage would be on this particular percentage d4 uh, in this case uh, multiplied by 1.5 percent that's the growth on it and uh, that's what becomes like d4 uh, let me actually so that is d4 multiplied by c5 plus d4 so that's kind of uh, this value this percentage d4 multiplied with the next growth and what that number look like it's going to be our um, uh, our growth so if uh, here we have the 5200 here again this 5200 is what i showed the last production value and if we do this so this is what the numbers uh, we are looking for for each each week um, so that's that's the that's the thing we want to sort out here uh, I'm not very good at Excel as you guys can see um, so yeah th these are the number we are looking uh, per period uh, depending on the growth per week so it means to calculate the growth we have this number already with the last uh, actual value we need to calculate this all right, so let's start writing a measure for the cumulative um, product, uh, percentage and uh, what we've seen in the Excel sheet, we try to reproduce it in uh, index. And this is where the product X is going to come in the picture. So I will call um, forecasted production. And uh, let's first calculate the just the percentage so see uh, how we're going to do that so first we're going to save the last date into the last visible based on the row contacts the last weekend uh, weekending date in a variable so that will come from our table week ending okay so what is this this will give when we are on this date uh, on this row we will get february 28th uh, 2020 so that's what the, the, and when, whatever the row we are we will we will have that last ending date so i will show you why why we need this and then what we're going to do here is um, let's actually write the measure so product x product x function again what we're going to do is we're going to iterate over the each uh, uh, end date of the week so that will come from our calendar table the reason why we will use it from calendar table because that's just what we are uh, using in our table visual here so that will be week calendar and date of week and uh, what we're going to do is one plus why we're we doing one again if we go back into Excel we have like a uh, this is to multiply right um, um, 
1.1 percent means uh, 101.1 that will that will give us the growth percentage so 1 plus this is means 100 plus and here is what we're going to do is calculate uh, uh, calculate sum um, forecast growth so what we're doing here is uh, given in the row context that's why we're using the calculate uh, given in the row context give us the forecast growth so it will pass the row context to the filter context uh, if we create a measure separate measure sum forecast growth then we don't need to use the calculate and uh, so that's this is what we're doing and now and so that's our product x so but this this is not going to work i i already know that because i uh, already tested it what we need to do is this is only going to give us uh for that particular week but we need this to be cumulative to make it cumulative what we want to do here is we're going to wrap this around calculate because we want to go uh from the start of the forecast growth percentage and then we're going to say comma and all calendar so remove any uh, filter on calendar and the, but it filter only up to the uh, current uh, week we are looking at and that's the why we store it in the last date so what we're going to say is end date of week is less than equal to last date all right because then it, it it's iterating over the whole um, uh, all the weeks uh, until in uh, to the row of contacts the, on which we are looking at so if we change uh, maybe a decimal places to four and use this measure in the visualization we expect to be the same percentage as in as in excel so here is 100 percent actually i should change uh, the visualize uh, the format to percentage okay so wherever there is an actual there's no growth it's always 100 percent so this when uh, we work through this this is 100 percent but when we have the percentage uh i should show the percentage here as well which was some for not some forecast a um, forecast growth maybe there's no special measure i have so let's put it in here all right so that would be so here is 101.1 percent of course so, uh, we have 100 percent one plus and then this is 102.6165 i think i give it a four digit and then now this is the cumulative one so if we quickly switch back to excel and compare these numbers so 101 and 10 this is the first one and then 102.62 uh, because this is four digit and that's why we are getting here it's uh, six 165 um, and then 156 97.54 so now this is working as expected so so we able to achieve this using the product x and um, now once we have this this becomes very very simple from here what we need to do is go back to our measure we already have the last actual value which is 5200 so basically this percentage is now multiplied with the last actual value so let me last actual production value is that the measure we have yeah and then multiply with this rate we calculated and of course this will not be a percentage anymore and it will be a decimal um, maybe two decimal number in two places two decimal numbers so okay here you go so let's look at this now so what we have here is 5200 5200 5200 5200 so because this is where the actual is and when the uh, we have the forecast is growth so we are getting 5257 that's like 1.1% 1, 1, 1 of this one and then 1.5 cumulative on this one so this number should again match with our um, excel 5336 5229 5072 5236 5328 and and so forth so on so this is working fine um, 
again I, I can enhance this measure or I can write another measure because if you look at the total it's not showing up the uh, correct uh, uh, value there are so many so many videos and so many articles about why my line item uh, the calculation is correct but it does not show um, a, a total uh, the correct total uh, at the total level uh, I will try to do a video on this but there are tons of videos on that so I don't think that is uh, I'm going to cover that in this video maybe in future but what we are I'm going to do is write another measure I can enhance this measure as well but let's uh, write another measure uh, which we will um, uh, call it uh, final measure actual and forecasted production so this is like so what we're gonna we're gonna iterate over our calendar table uh, because that why we're iterating over calendar table because this is what is on the x-axis uh, or on the rows and then we're gonna say if again calculate max of our um, table type if it is actual then use uh, sum actual because that sum actually is just a simple uh, sum measure if not it means it's a forecasted and then we can use forecasted uh, production which we just created a measure and again um, sorry missing one uh, just to clarify uh, why I'm using calculate here is because we want to pass the a, a row contacts to the uh, to the filter contacts. Uh, if I already have a measure max table type, um, then um, then that would have worked I, without calculate. But since we don't have a measure max table type, so I have to wrap it in calculate. Again, there's too so many blog posts and videos on contacts transition and to understand rather than me explaining here you do watch those videos on contacts transition and to understand what, what's happening here so basically what we're doing is iterate over calendar uh, because we are on x-axis we are showing that cal end date of week from calendar table and then we're seeing if it is an actual um, and then use a sum actual which is a, a just simple sum of the value and otherwise use the forecasted production which we calculated based on the last actual value and then cumulative uh, forecasted growth applied on that so now this is our final output measure so if i use this measure uh, let's make it uh, two decimal places so let's use that on our visual and remove the forecasted production And also we can now remove this 5200 which was just to showcase um, and here you go so now we have the output so as you can see uh, up to May 15th we have some actuals and that's what we are getting here 5, 5249 whatever the actual is and then from May 15th onward every week there is a growth 1.1 this is a cumulative growth based on the last actual production uh, so then we have a 5200 then applied whatever the uh, cumulative growth looks like so this is the number for each week and then end of the day this is the total if we sum this up that's $83,000 or production numbers that's what it is again uh, product tax as I said is not very commonly used a function but again if you have something to do with the cumulative growth or these percentages like this it, it comes uh, very very handy and this is the uh, a function we need to use I will put the link to my previous um, uh, video on product tax as well in the description of this video do check out that video I hope you learned a few things out of this. I know it's a little bit of complex, but again, um, I tried my best to explain it. Um, if you if you think there is a better explanation you need, do let me know. Uh, until next video, have a good day. Thanks for watching. Do subscribe my channel. Thank you. Bye for now.